Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome learners. My name is Stephen Kariongi. Uh, today we are going to discuss a form three topic in chemistry and the topic is nitrogen and its compounds. Welcome. Uh, before we get into the topic, uh, it is important to understand uh, what are the objectives of this particular topic so that by the end of the topic, uh, the learner is able to assess himself or herself and know whether uh, he or she has understood the requirements of this topic. So the objectives are as follows. Uh, in this topic, the learner is expected uh, to describe the isolation of nitrogen from the air. To describe the process of isolating nitrogen from the air, is in small scale and large scale. So a small scale is like in the lab and the large scale is in an industrial setup. Uh, number two, uh, the learner should be able to describe the laboratory preparation properties and uses of nitrogen, nitrogen gas. And then next, the other objective is to be able to describe the laboratory preparation properties and uses of nitrogen oxides. Of nitrogen oxides, we have a number of them and we are going to look at them in more details. Uh, objective number four uh, is to be able to describe the laboratory preparation properties and uses of ammonia gas which is one of the compounds of nitrogen and uh, the next objective of this particular topic is to explain the difference in properties between ammonia gas and aqueous ammonia. So to be able to distinguish between ammonia gas and aqueous ammonia. Number six, uh, the learner should be able to describe the large scale manufacture and uses of ammonia. <clears throat> Number seven, the learner should be able to calculate the percentage of nitrogen
been nitrogenous fertilizers. In nitrogenous fertilizers uh, that are made from nitrogen. Uh, next, <coughs> uh, the learner should be able to describe the laboratory preparation of nitric 5 acid properties and uses Next, number nine, is to be able to describe the large scale manufacture of nitric five acid. Ten is to compare uh, the properties of dilute and concentrated nitric 5 acid and lastly Number 11, uh, the learner should be able to explain the pollution effects of nitrogen compounds in the atmosphere. So those are basically the <coughs> objectives of this particular uh, topic, to be able to describe isolation of nitrogen from the air. How is nitrogen uh, obtained from the air? Because that is the main source of nitrogen. Uh, both in a small scale, that is in a laboratory isolation, and also in a large scale, what we refer to as the industrial isolation. Number two, to be able to describe the laboratory preparation. This is now preparation, not isolation. There's a difference between isolation and preparation. So isolation is to obtain it from the air, where it's already there. But laboratory preparation is when it is absolutely not there, and you are required to use some reagents to prepare it. Uh, then, of course, we discuss the properties and the uses of nitrogen. Number three, to be able to describe uh, the laboratory preparation, properties and uses of nitrogen oxides. So we have a number of nitrogen oxides and we'll uh, find out how are they prepared, what are their properties and what are their uses. Uh, then number four is to be able to describe the laboratory preparation, properties and uses of ammonia gas. Ammonia is one of the compounds of uh, nitrogen, so we'll also find out how is it prepared in the laboratory. Then we'll seek to explain what is the difference between ammonia as a gas and aqueous ammonia. Aqueous ammonia is basically ammonia solution. And then number six is to be able to describe the large scale manufacture and uses uh, of uh, ammonia. Seven, to calculate the percentage of nitrogen in uh, nitrogenous fertilizers. And eight, to describe the laboratory preparation of nitric 5 acid, another compound of nitrogen, uh, properties and uses. And, fine, and uh, also, to be able to describe the large scale. So number eight is the laboratory preparation of nitric 5 acid. But number nine is large scale, that is the industrial 
manufacture of nitric fiber acid. Then, uh, number 10 is to compare the properties of dilute and concentrated nitric fiber acid. They have different properties when it is concentrated and when it, it is dilute. And then finally, we'll explain what are the pollution effects of all these nitrogen compounds that we have learned and how do they affect the atmosphere. So basically, those are the objectives that we'll be going through in this particular uh, chapter. So after looking at the objectives, it's important to do a small introduction of nitrogen. Uh, first of all, we know that uh, nitrogen is an element with atomic number. with atomic number 7, that is the atomic number of nitrogen, and is in group 5. Nitrogen is found in group 5. Just leave it there. It's in group 5. So this group 5 is because nitrogen has an electron arrangement the electron arrangement is 2 5 that's why we are basically saying that it is in group 5 uh, this nitrogen exists naturally as a diatomic molecule as a diatomic molecule of nitrogen gas a diatomic molecule of nitrogen gas which we write as N2 and of course we know that diatomic means that uh, the molecule is made up of two atoms, diatomic. Di means two atomic, two atomic. So we are saying that nitrogen is a diatomic molecule or nitrogen exists naturally as a diatomic molecule of nitrogen gas. So that is N2. So when we write N2, we are talking about nitrogen, the gas. When we write N, we are talking about nitrogen, the element or the atom of uh, nitrogen. Um, <coughs> so that is basically one of the ways in which nitrogen uh, exists and of course we know that uh, whereby it constitutes nitrogen constitutes 78 percent of atmospheric air. So it's, it's the most abundant gas in the atmosphere consisting of 78%. The remaining 22% is shared by the other, uh, the other remaining gases. So uh, that is it. So we also have uh, nitrogen also exists exists naturally in and animals. So basically we are saying that nitrogen also exists naturally in plants and animals in form of 
proteins. So proteins are basically nitrogenous compounds. So they are basically, uh, they, they consist of uh, nitrogen as one of the elements. So that is a, a brief introduction about uh, nitrogen. Uh, we also know that uh, nitrogen atoms bond covalently they bond covalently to form nitrogen gas or the nitrogen molecule. So in this case uh, we have if this is a nitrogen atom it bonds to another nitrogen atom by use of covalent bonds through sharing three pairs of electrons so there are three pairs of electrons shared and then we have two unshared electrons so we have a, what you call a triple covalent bond so these are nitrogen molecule which can also be written as n then we have a triple bond and then we have that so basically this is the structure of nitrogen uh, molecule one two three four five six so there are every two electrons is a covalent bond every pair of electrons is a covalent bond that's why there are there are three that's what you are calling a triple covalent bond so that is an introduction about nitrogen um we're going to have a short assignment of that So the assignment, number one, name two natural sources of nitrogen and its compounds. And then number two, use a dot and cross diagram to show bonding in nitrogen gas. So we'll stop there until next time. Goodbye.